what is conversion rate? So when we first started writing about conversion rate, um, we had to sort of define it, right? And it was obvious to define the math behind conversion rate. And this is something that drives us crazy, right? So if, if I take your conversion rate, that's that 2% average, and I get it to 3% average, I have a problem with averages too, but how much have I increased your conversion rate? 50%, right? Not 1%, right? So first, the math is something that's really problematic for people. And by the way, if you want your boss to pay attention to this, you gotta talk about 50%, not 1%, right? Because it just makes no sense whatsoever. How much are you gonna do for 1%? But you realize that all things being equal, if you increase your conversion rate from 2% to 3%, right? The top line should grow by 50%. Right, so first, it's really important to do that. But the second thing is, this definition is one of the oldest things we've ever written. And it's, it's repeated itself over and over again. We found it that it was a really nice way of putting it. So conversion rate is a measure of your ability to persuade visitors to take the action you want them to take. It's a reflection of your effectiveness and your customer satisfaction. For you to achieve your goals, visitors must first achieve theirs. This is, this, this is basically it. People come, right, and they have some sort of purpose they want to accomplish. If your purpose and their purpose align, right, there's happiness and there's money to change your hand. Right, that's what we're all about. When we first started talking about this stuff, I mean, literally in the year 2000, before people were even publishing conversion rates, because they didn't start publishing uh, average conversion rates till 2001, and back then shop.org reported the average conversion rate is 1.4, okay? That was the average conversion rate. And when people would call us up, people would say, well, my, my conversion rate is such and such, and what do you think it should be? And I used to say, anything below a 10% conversion rate, you have to explain to me. Okay, and people thought we were absolutely nuts. Now some of you have a conversion rate below 10%, okay? If you're in retail, in some segments, the explanation is sort of clear, but in most segments it's not, and you will need the explanation, not the other way around. If you're in lead generation and your conversion rates are below 20%, again, you will need the explanation, not the other way around. And it's, it's nice because now when I say that, I've got some real data to back me up. This is some data from December 2009, right? So if we look at that, we see that Schwann's reported a 45.9% conversion rate, Harry and David 30.5, Current 28.8, Amazon 25%, right? These are, well, the last one, Proflower is 22%, okay? Those are pretty good conversion rates. And I know, because I've done this before, that people will say, well, that was December. Conversion rates go higher in December. So I wanted to compare it to something fairly recent, which was October of 2009. And at the bottom, you see Women Within with 17.7 and QVC with 18.3. So a 10% conversion rate is not unachievable. It's simply that you haven't done it yet, right? So I'm hoping to change your perspective because in the days of direct marketing, when people came out of direct marketing and they stopped publishing catalogs, right? Remember, we were sending stuff out, big piles of paper, right? If you, th if you think about it, at Christmas, we still had those big piles of paper, right? Right, they go right to the recycling bin, right? When you push that out and you get a 3% conversion rate, everybody stands up on a table and applauds. However, here, with people searching us out, they come to our website and we get a 2 3% conversion rate, and because we're making money, we pat ourselves on the back. Well, yes, we do. Okay, we should be ashamed of ourselves. Okay, simply because it's profitable doesn't mean that it's efficient. Right, and so what happens is because we've eliminated the cost of publishing, we've accepted that type of profitability. And when this turn happened in around 2002, 2003, 2004, I want you to really think back. And I don't, how many of you were involved in the internet in 2003? So a bunch of you, so you'll remember this. You'll remember that that was right after the dot-com bust, <coughs> right? Right, it was awful. And we had, you know, most of it had been cleaned out. And what was the big thing was usability. 
right? Usability was a big thing, Jacob Nielsen, and how are we gonna make things usable? Well, the usability today is way better than it was in 2003, right? We didn't have Ajax back then. I mean, you know, most people didn't know how to design a checkout. Uh, it was just awful. Today, we haven't seen the, the, the difference show itself clearly, right, in the results that people are getting. And it, and it troubles us. I mean, when I, when I say us, I mean, Brian and I are really troubled by this. As much as we appreciate people saying, oh, we read your books, we love what you did, what, we really, what we're really troubled by is that more people aren't optimizing on a daily basis. That they're not really thinking about how to improve what they have on a daily basis. We just we simply can't understand why that is. So anyway, I get to say that and share that with you, okay? And I'm not scolding you. Just a little bit. Okay? So, we came for secrets, right? There's 21 secrets. And the thing is that, for the most part, we'll believe the secrets. Because, like anything else that's really profound, the secret is simple, but it's hard. Marketing is really simple, but it's hard. What do I mean by that? You know, if we wanted to be professional basketball players, you said, listen, I want, to, I want to be the next Michael Jordan. And I said to you, you know, how many foul shots do you shoot a day? You come back and say, well, I don't do it every day, but every once in a while I shoot a few hundred foul shots. I'd laugh at you. <laughs> right? And, and I'd be justified to laugh at you. However, if you said, you know what, man, I shoot them all day long. I shoot tens of thousands of foul shots a month. I'm practicing. I want to get as good as I can get. Right? It's a foul shot. It's nothing fancy. I'm not talking about Duncan. I'm not talking about anything complicated. Right? Foul shot. It's the fundamentals that people don't want to do. Everybody wants to focus on the complicated, the obscure, the analytics, the testing tools, the new technology. In marketing, the actual thing that you need is simple but hard. Now, I'll share it with you in a second, the, the fundamental secret. I just want to make sure that you keep it among yourselves. <laughs> just two things that you need in order to persuade people to do what they already want to do. Okay? I, I, we're not talking about coercing people. We're talking about asking them to do something that they already want to do. Right? And it's relevance and credibility. Now, deceptively simple, right? Because there's a lot of work behind these things. But what does relevant actually mean? Relevant means that I recognize it, that you've spoken to me the way I want to be spoken to, that I find the solution that I'm looking for, right? That I understand that this is something that I'm really into, right? It's relevant. Wow, that's what I want. And then, that you're credible enough, that you anticipate my questions, that you answer my questions, that you actually share with me things that might even be negative about it, right? Don't tell me everything is positive. Establish your credibility. Let me know that you're right. And if I found everything that I wanted and I understood credibly what it's about, why wouldn't I buy it? See, this is why when I talk about conversion rates in excess of 10%, this is what we always said. It was just simple. It was like, here's the deal. 100 people come to your website. 50% are never going to buy. Why? Let's just say that. Okay? Another 50%, well, they're not going to buy now, no matter what. They're just not going to buy now. They may buy tomorrow, they may buy a year from now. They're just not in the market, they're curious. Right? We're at 25%. Okay, I need another excuse to sort of knock this off by half again. And it becomes really hard. People say, well, technology or this or that and whatever other excuses they want to give me. And I say, okay, so let's knock that down one more time, even though I think that got taken care of for the first 50%, right? We're at about 12%, 12.5%. That's where my 10% always came from. I couldn't figure out why, if we could provide what people wanted in a credible way, they wouldn't buy from us. Right? This is the, this is the basic premise. Now, the 21 tips I'm going to take you through.